When you pray in tongues, no longer do you live in the realm of mystery. You live in the realm of revelation. Some things cannot be broken off of you unless you are strengthened in the spirit by praying in tongues. Prophecy and tongues, it is communication gifts. All the other gifts has to do with perspective, conscious mind, and it has to do uh, the mind of God, and it has to do with the hand of God. You follow me? So I believe praying in tongues is the most important spiritual gift. I want to give you uh, these seven nuggets on the seven benefits of praying in tongues. And if you're being blessed right now, give me some hearts and likes. And if you're receiving, do share this on your wall. The seven benefits of praying in tongues. Number one, and if you're writing notes, write this down. Somebody write this down on the Facebook Live broadcast for me so that people will get this. Amen. Number one, the first benefit of praying in tongues is that it strengthens you. Someone say strengthen. It strengthens you. It encourages you. It edifies you. It makes you stronger from within. The Christian life is not about being strengthened from the outside in, but it's about being strengthened from the inside out. We strengthen our inmost being. We strengthen our inmost spirit, our spirit man that dwells within. There is a spiritual entity intertwined with the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside of you. And when you pray in tongues, you begin to strengthen yourself. Morabata, which means edify. Edifica, which means to build up. You begin to build up strength. You begin to muster up courage. You begin to muster up supernatural courage. courage. You begin to muster up the strength that you didn't know that you had. You were afraid, but now you pray in tongues and now you become bold. You were weary and you were sad and you were stressed, but now you begin to pray in tongues. And you become strengthened and now you begin to feel this supernatural power overcome you and take over your body. And now you feel like superman, superwoman, a supernatural being and you feel built up in the spirit. And no matter what's coming at you, because you're built up and you're strong now because you've been praying in tongues, now you're ready to overcome all obstacles. So the first benefit of praying in tongues is strengthen. Someone say strengthen. All right, when you pray in tongues, it strengthens you. Let me ask you this. Have you been feeling tired? Have you been feeling weary? Have you been feeling weak? Have you been feeling like you're just lethargic? You're lazy, you're sluggish, you're lethargic, you feel lazy. You know, laziness is a curse. Laziness is of the devil. Of course the devil wants you to be lazy. Of course the devil does not want you to open up your Bible. Of course the devil does not want you to pray. Of course the devil does not want you to pray in tongues. Of course the devil wants you to be deceived and he wants you to believe in the deception and the lie that, you know, you only need to go to church one Sunday out of the week and you don't need to do anything else for Jesus. You don't need to do anything else for God. But when you pray in tongues, Robo, you begin to strengthen yourself and no longer are you weak. Let me tell you this. When you are weak, you are more susceptible to sin. When you are weak in the spirit, you are more open and you are more prone to fall into temptation. But when you pray in tongues, you become strengthened and you become strong because your spirit man begins to strengthen your body. And now you are able to overcome the things that come your way. Listen, I believe in natural rest. I believe that everybody should have eight to nine hours of sleep, okay? Myself, I don't have that on a regular basis, but when I am home in Los Angeles, I do. I mean, when I'm traveling, I usually have maybe four to five hours of sleep a night, but of course I like to sleep in planes whenever I can. I'm always trying to eat healthy salads, fresh, juices, uh, waters, I'm taking my pill, uh, my uh, vitamins, excuse me, I'm taking my minerals, I'm taking all these things. You know, so I believe in being smart, not stupid, and I believe in having natural rest, amen? But at the same time, working out daily at the gym, exercising, going hiking, going jogging, but at the same time, some things cannot be broken off of you unless you are strengthened in the spirit by praying in tongues, all right? 
There's so many worldly carnal people that say, Pastor Ben, you need to rest. You need to you rest. You need to sleep. You need to, you know, uh, listen, listen. I'm resting by praying in tongues. I'm resting and I'm being strengthened and I'm coming alive by praying in the Holy Ghost. That's more important than just sleeping. That's more important than just resting. It's all important. But do not neglect the importance of praying in tongues. It will strengthen you even more than in the natural. If you're with me, someone say amen. I, uh, the second benefit of praying in tongues is that it saturates you. Someone say saturates. All right, it saturates you. What does that mean? It means that it begins to fill, fill, fill. The Apostle Paul says, do not be drunk on wine, uh, intoxication, the influence of these spirits, but be fill, fill, fill to your overflow. And now you're saturated by the presence of God, which means that when you pray in tongues, you become saturated. Not ankle deep, not knee deep, but now you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's why many times in the book of Acts, when when uh, the power of God began to come upon the Gentiles and the unbelievers, fresh new converts, and they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. One of the first evidences uh, or one of the first manifestations, blessings right afterwards, they got baptized in the Holy Ghost. They, they were overcome and saturated and they began to pray in tongues. So praying in tongues causes you to be saturated by the reality of the Holy Spirit. It saturates you in the goodness of God. It saturates you in the power of Jesus. It saturates you in the Holy Spirit. It sat praying in tongues causes you to be saturated by the reality of His goodness. And now as you're saturated, you're saturated by the glory bubble, the glory cloud of His power, of His peace, of His joy, of His presence. And no, no matter what comes in your way, you know that you are saturated. And now you begin to saturate others because you're love drunk, you're intoxicated, you're overcome by the Holy Spirit. So praying in tongues, the second benefit of praying in tongues is that you are saturated. Someone say saturate. Come on. Robo. You become saturated by the goodness of God. Nothing can take it away. Come on now. Nothing can come in this love glory bubble. You become saturated by the presence of God. And now you overflow into others. You can't stop. I'm telling you. Even if you wanted to, you cannot stop. Because you're saturated by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Who wants to be saturated in the goodness of God today? Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. And therefore the reality of heaven becomes greater than the reality of the natural. The reality of the supernatural becomes greater than the reality uh, uh, of the natural. I want to share this story and this testimony before we go on to the third benefit of praying in tongues. There's times where fear and anxiety will try to overcome. There's times where anxiety, you know what I'm talking about, will try to grip my mind. But when I pray in tongues, robo, it begins to saturate my mind and my mind becomes renewed and no longer is that lie, no longer is that thing trying to get in. But now I'm saturated by the power of the reality of truth that I'm loved, I'm secure, I'm strong, I'm strengthened, etc., etc., etc. So there's no more room for devils to come in. There's no more room for worldliness, for the flesh to come in. When you pray in tongues, you get saturated. Now you better hear me now. There's times where we go to Africa and we encounter witch doctors, we encounter witches, shamans, all of them. And because you're praying it to us, go da 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 it begins to permeate <clears throat> the saturating presence of God. And now they could feel that power. They could feel the presence of Jesus. You better pray in tongues, somebody. Pray in tongues. Amen. Listen, uh, time's going by, so I want to keep going on. The third benefit of praying in tongues is that it sanctifies. Someone say sanctifies. And just to let you know, all these seven benefits, it starts with the letter S, okay? It sanctifies, amen? What does that mean? To be sanctified means that it sets you apart. To be sanctified, it means that it cleanses you. To be sanctified, it means that it washes you. To be sanctified, it means that now you are washed, you're clean, and you're made ready in holiness. You're made ready in power. You're made ready in glory. It begins to sanctify, renew, wash your mind. It washes your heart. It washes your eyes. It washes your lips. It sanctifies your hands. Come on now. It begins to sanctify. 
praying in tongues causes you to be sanctified and it washes you to be clean and prepared for the greater glory and the greatest signs and wonders that God wants to give you and entrust into you. Come on. God wants to sanctify you. So praying in tongues sanctifies you inside and out so that now you can enter into the most holy place, the holy of holies. Now you can enter into the places of greater glory. And now as you're praying in tongues, as you're praying in the Holy Spirit, it begins to sanctify you and prepare you as a priest to withhold more of the glory of God. God wants to sanctify you. And catch this. When you pray in tongues, it also sanctifies the atmosphere. When you pray in tongues, not only does it sanctify your mind and your heart and your emotions, come on, from all the crud, all the confusion, all the crap, all the junk, all the emotional bio, all of the things that are trying to clutter you, it sanctifies you, washes you clean, gives you a pure conscious, a clean conscious. And when you pray in tongues, it also cleanses the atmosphere. Come on, you go into places where it's demonic, you could feel the stress, you could feel the anger, the dissension, the fighting, you could feel uh, the anxiety, you could feel the demonic warfare. But when you begin to pray in tongues, it sanctifies, cleanses the atmosphere. You better hear me that. So when you pray in tongues out loud and it sanctifies, cleanses the atmosphere, it actually attracts the power of God. It attracts angels. It attracts the Holy Ghost to begin to come. He says, now the atmosphere is cleansed and sanctified. So now I can begin to come and pour more of myself out in this place. Come on now. The Lord wants to cleanse your atmosphere. The Lord wants to cleanse your heart, your mind. The Lord wants to sanctify, amen, your thoughts. Have you been feeling a little yucky a little mucky have you been feeling a little muddy like you know you went through some things listen all the time i live in the city of la hollywood is just right down the street from me okay all the time i need to be prayed up in tongues i need to be prayed up in the spirit don't try to come into supernatural places where there's principalities at war and at work and there's all the stuff going on come on you need to pray in tongues and sanctify your mind, sanctify yourself, be spick, spot, spot clean. And a lot of times it's not even you, it's just the atmosphere you're in. So pray in tongues, sanctify yourself, amen? The fourth benefit of praying in tongues is that it sharpens you. Someone say sharpen. It keeps you sharp, not dull. Have you ever tried to cut meat with a dull blade? There's no teeth on it. Come on, grandpa. Come on, grandma. How are you going to try to chew and eat when you have no teeth? It's like baby food. God wants to keep you sharp. God wants to keep you razor sharp with blades that are so sharp that it just cuts through like butter, like B-U-T-T-E-R. It cuts like butter. God wants you to be sharp. Come on. He wants you to have sharp vision. 2020 vision. He wants you to have clarity. No witchcraft. Come on. No deception. Come on. Robo. No emotional warfare. No clutter. No crap. You will be sharp in the spirit and you will be able to see. You will be able to sense. You will be able to discern. You see the Jezebel spirit wants to confuse you, wants to clutter you, wants to cause you to be uh, bogged down with heavy baggage. The Jezebel spirit wants you to, uh, you know, just be all over the place. But God wants to keep you sharp. He doesn't want you to be tied and mixed in with emotional and mental and spiritual confusion. But he wants to keep you sharp. Not like a grandma, grandpa's teeth, where you need to rely on dentures. You need to rely on somebody to chew and break down the food for you. Come on, prophet, break it down. But God wants you to be sharp. Amen. Which means clarity. 2020 vision. Some of you do not have sound minds. Some of you feel like you are, uh, you're just dull. You know, you're just boring. You're just always missing it. You're just all over the place. Listen, that's not God. That's not Jesus. God wants to keep you razor sharp. Your eyesight, laser sharp, like eagles. Your eyesight, 
your speech, your words, the things that you do, every single thing that you plan and that you do, it will be sharp, it will be focused, it will be cutting edge, it will be quick, it will be incision, come on. Can you imagine a doctor trying to do surgery on your heart? Intricate, intimate, very important areas in your body, in your organ with a dull knife, with a knife that was dull, with a knife that was used from the surgery before, and it still has crusty, black, dried up blood from somebody else. Can you imagine? That is against ethics. That is evil. That is a contamination and a disease waiting to happen. God wants to cause you to be sanctified and to be sharp. Hallelujah. And I believe that God, um, when we begin to pray in tongues, we are sharp. We're not lethargic. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of times before I preach, a lot, of, most of the time I'll preach in the evenings, okay? Because a lot of revival services are in the nighttime or in the evening. So a lot of times before I, uh, before I preach, I do not eat. All right? I do not eat. Like on Sunday, uh, I don't even remember if I ate. Uh, you know, I came in from Canada, Shaka. <laughs> but today, all day, I, I did not eat all day today. All right, uh, it just happened that way. I'm, I'm fasting today from food. Uh, I am gonna have dinner with my father after this broadcast. But you see, when you fast, when you don't eat, you're sharp. And the reason why a lot of people, you know, uh, they feel sluggish when they come to church. They feel sluggish when they come to service because they just had a big fat buffet, heavy meal. So now you're sleeping and you're snoring and you're tired because your body's trying to process and digest all that. No, no, you need to be sharp, people of God. You need to be sharp. The devil wants you to be always be stuffing your mouth with food. Come on. But why not allow your mouth to be full with blessings with tongues? Robo soba baba kayabo robo to. You'll be sharp and you'll be ready for battle. Someone say amen. Stop being distracted. Stop being, all right? Is anybody receiving right now? All right, the fifth benefit of praying in tongues is secrets. Someone say secrets. Come on now. All right, the Bible says that praying in tongues, we utter mysteries to God. We utter mysteries to God. The fifth benefit of praying in tongues is secrets. We utter mysteries to God. What does that mean? Mysteries. That means that something that's hidden. Something that's concealed, okay? Listen, I'm not going to give you the PIN code to my bank account. I'm not going to give you the PIN code to my credit card. I'm not going to give you the. I'm not going to give you the key, the code to have access to what's concealed. Why would I reveal secrets to you? Come on, I don't know if you're going to steal. I don't know if you're going to have bank fraud. I don't know if you're going to do these things to my. Come on, why would I reveal secrets to you when you and I have not uh, secured that trust, that level of trust? Why would I reveal these secrets to you? So when you pray in tongues, secrets become revealed to you. When you pray in tongues, no longer do you live in the realm of mystery. You live in the realm of revelation. You better hear me now. The will of God is not a dark mystery. The will of God is not some dark, mysterious thing where you're always needing to search to find it. No, the will of God is so simple. The will of God, first and foremost, is the will of God. Secondly, the will of God is Christ Jesus living in you. And thirdly, the will of God is you being filled and led by the Holy Spirit. So simple, all right? The will of God is the word of God, all right? And when you're, the will of God is not some dark, mysterious, confusing, difficult thing to try to understand and find out. There's times where people are like, Pastor Ben, what is God's will for my life? Does he want me to be married? Does he want me to be single? Does he want me to go to Africa? Or does he want me to go to Vanuatu? Does he want me to give all that I have to the poor? Come on. It's so simple. And when you pray in tongues, you're strengthened. You're sharp. You're sanctified. You're saturated. And now the secrets of God become revealed to you. And now it's what was now concealed is now revealed. What was now hidden is now uh, opened up. What was now a mystery is now revealed. So when you pray in tongues, no longer is it just mysteries that are uttered unto God, but God begins to give you downloads. Someone say downloads. God begins to give you downloads and the spirit of understanding so that as you surrender to him, 
you begin to get his thoughts. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, someone write it down, Isaiah 55. His thoughts are higher. His ways are higher. His thoughts are not my thoughts. His ways are not my ways. But let me tell you, people of God, if you are in the Holy Spirit, you will be in his way because he is the way, the truth, and the light. If you are in the Holy Spirit, you will not be in your earthly, your cultural, your Canadian, your American, your uh, Mexican, your Korean mind, but you will be in the mind of Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul says, be in the mind of Christ. How do you, how do you obtain the mind of Christ? The thoughts uh, of God. You, you, you have the mind of Christ by praying in the spiritual language of Jesus Christ. People ask me all the time, saying, Pastor Ben, you know, what is God's will for my life? I'll tell you this. When I pray, I, when I pray, I call it thinking with God. Someone say thinking with God. Okay. When I pray, I call it thinking with God. You know why? Because I begin to have a conversation with God in my mind and we begin to think together in my head, in my spirit. I know what's who's I know what's mine, I know what's his. I know what's my voice and I know what's his voice. And so when I begin to pray, I begin to listen to his voice. His thoughts begin to come into my mind and now I begin to think with God. I begin to talk with God and think with God in the strategy room of my brain. It's so simple. God wants to reveal secrets to you. What does that mean? That means things that are to come. Things that are in the future. Things that are about to come your way. He wants you to be prepared. He wants these secrets to be revealed. That's what us as prophets and prophetic people, <clears throat> us as a prophetic community, <clears throat> excuse me, praying in tongues is so important. Because when we pray in tongues, we communicate with God. And then we're able to communicate and prophesy and decode that message and that mystery, those secrets to the world. We as prophetic people, we need to pray in tongues because it reveals the secrets of God. Amen. Someone say amen. Number six, the sixth benefit of praying in tongues is this. Subdue. S-U-B-D-U-E. Someone write down subdue. All right. Come on now. What does that mean? That means that you not only strengthen, but now you subdue, which means that you have dominion over your sinful nature. Over the world, over your old nature, you crucify and you put to death uh, by the to the cross your old sinful nature, and you subdue whatever is not of God, which means that it's a wrestle, and you you make the devil say uncle. You subdue, and you have dominion in Jesus' name. Come on, the devil does not want you to be a slave. He wants you to be, uh, to master the things that are around you. He wants you to subdue. That's why the Bible said in the book of Genesis, be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. Because you are meant to be a king and a queen, not just a peasant, not just a servant. You are meant to have dominion wherever you go in your sphere of influence. Come on. You're meant to stomp on devils. Wherever the soles of your feet go, you will subdue the land. It means that you will you will have dominion and you will take over. Come on. The dominionist theology. That means that you uh, can subdue your flesh. The apostle Paul says, I do things that I don't want to do in the body. And I do things that I, uh, and I don't do things that I do want to do. But when you pray in tongues, you have strength and you are able to subdue your old carnal nature. And you subdue everything that comes around you. Come on now. When you pray in tongues. You come into a place of surrender, okay? When you pray in tongues, you surrender, you submit. Someone say submit. These are big S words. You submit yourself to God and you pray. Listen, only humble people pray, okay? Only humble people listen to God. Only humble people obey. So when you pray in tongues, you're submitting yourself to the Lord you draw yourself near to him. You submit yourself near to God. When you pray in tongues, you submit yourself so that you can be subdued by him. And therefore, you can subdue the world. Someone say amen. It takes the purity and the power of the Holy Spirit. Praying in tongues. It takes the purity and the power of the Holy Spirit. Praying in tongues. To subdue all obstacles. You are meant to 
overcome and not be overcome. You are meant to prevail and not just fail in life. Someone say amen. And I'll tell you this, some of you are not getting the breakthrough that you need in life because you're not praying in tongues. All right, and I don't want to be legalistic or religious about this, but some of you are not uh, you know, going from glory to glory because you're not praying in tongues because praying in tongues causes the warfare, causes the demonic aggression against you, causes uh, those forces that want you to fail and that are, that are wanting to put you down. You pray in tongues and you subdue all of those things in Jesus' name. And the seventh benefit, someone say seventh, the seventh benefit of praying in tongues is this, sonship. Someone say sonship. Praying in tongues, it solidifies and it secures your identity in Christ. You already know who you are, but when you pray in tongues, you feel the umph, the unction, the power, the authority, the weight of that. When you pray in tongues, you feel the blessing, you feel the nearness, you feel... Uh, uh, the inheritance, you feel the royalty. When you pray in tongues, you uh, deepen and you secure and you experience uh, the beauty of sonship. Sons of God pray in tongues. Why does it say in the book of Romans, those who are sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. How are you going to be led by the Spirit of God if you're not communicating with God by praying in tongues? Tongues is communication. So if you want to be led by him in a relationship, you need to be in communication. Talk with him. Hear him speak. That's tongues. So praying in tongues secures and solidifies your sonship in him. Are you a son or are you a slave? Slaves barely talk to their master. Slaves are afraid to talk to their master. But sons love talking with their daddy. Sons love talking with Jesus. Sons love talking with Papa God. And they love receiving those messages, those feelings, those umps, those moans, and those groans. Hallelujah. The Bible says when you don't know what to pray, there's moans and groans inexpressible. That's the Holy Spirit. Which means that now you as a son, as an intercessor, you begin to carry and feel and bear the expressions of God's heart. You begin to feel the emotions of the Spirit of God. You begin to feel. Rabo Sarabahaya. Robo. See, I'm praying right now because it's the unction of God and I'm strengthening myself right now because I've been teaching, preaching literally for 15 minutes, almost an hour now. And I'm getting a little tired because I've been fasting all day. But as I'm praying right now, I'm strengthening my. Oh! I'm strengthening myself to get this out right now. Zoba saboromo shandarababa. Robata. Where's the interpretation, Pastor Ben? Listen to the first 10 minutes of this teaching. Okay? And it secures your sonship. It secures your love of life. It strengthens. It makes more rich your relationship with God. It brings more alive. It becomes a greater reality of the truth that you are loved, that you are a son, that uh, the father of lights is near, is upon you, lives in you. And when you pray in tongues, it secures and solidifies your sonship. Have you been doubting your sonship? Have you been doubting God? Am I loved? Am I important? Am I valued? Where are you, Lord? Then pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Once again, it'll saturate, it'll solidify your sonship. All right? One of the other benefits is that you surrender. All right? As you surrender, you become overcome by him. Listen, and I'll, I want to say this as I close. Um, many times I'll teach and I'll tell people that praying in tongues to me is the most important gift of the spirit. And let me tell you why. Because praying in tongues, I, I call it the rudder gift. You know, the, James says that your tongue is like a rudder of the ship. Though it's a small thing, your tongue, it has the power to influence the motion of your whole body and the motion of your life. The Bible says there's power of life and death in your tongue. So I call the gift of tongues, the most powerful and important spiritual gift. Why? Because it means that you're in communication with God. 
And it means that when you pray in tongues, it becomes the rudder for the rest of your spiritual gifts. You follow me? So when you pray in tongues, it causes you to so surrender in this love relationship and communication with Jesus. And as you surrender, you become saturated, you become overcome. And that's how you begin to grow in prophecy. That's how you begin to grow in miracles. That's how you begin to go into open heavens, open visions, into trances. That's how you go into 1 Corinthians where the Apostle Paul says, I, excuse me, maybe 2 Corinthians chapter 12, where uh, the Apostle Paul says, I, I was encountered, I was, I met the, I knew somebody who was in third heavens. He went to the third heavens above because he was praying in tongues. He was so communicating with Jesus, so lost in love with the Lord, praying in the spirit, as Jude said, so lost in love that he was overcome and was saturated. And he was so surrendered that he was caught up in visions, in encounters, in third heaven encounters in third heaven open heaven vision he was so encountered in trances and ecstasis that word uh apostle paul's in second corinthians 12 i believe uh that talks about uh the third heavens uh uh that word is bliss or is ecstasis which means the ec ecstatic encounter vision uh oneness with god with jesus and that's what Christianity is meant to be. It's meant to be an encounter with God. You are an encounter with Jesus. You are an encounter with the Holy Ghost that's waiting to be released to the, to the world. But when we pray in tongues, that begins to be the rudder of the ship. And it begins to move us in forward motion. Causes us to be more surrendered. And now, robo somba, the, the gifts of God begin to flow. The power of God begins to flow. More prophecies, more miracles, more visions and encounters, more dream life begins to flow. That's why I call praying in tongues, the gift of tongues, the most important spiritual gift. Because it is communication. Prophecy and tongues, it is communication gifts. All the other gifts has to do with uh, 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 perspective, conscious mind, and it has to do uh, the mind of God, and it has to do with the hand of God. You follow me? So I believe praying in tongues is the most important spiritual gift. And God wants to, bam, grow you in this gift, in the things of God. And uh, wow, I'm so drunk. I'm so whacked on the Holy Ghost. I've been teaching for literally for an hour now. But guys, I love you. And I pray that you were blessed by this teaching. I know I gave a lot right now. And uh, for those that are, uh, you know, questioning the importance, the validity of the gift of tongues, the gifts of the spirit. What does it mean to interpret tongues? I said all that in the first 20, 25 minutes of this teaching that laid the foundation. But I believe people of God, the gifts of the spirit are still alive and active and well now today. And God wants is still releasing it because the Bible says in the book of Joel chapter two, that God is pouring out his spirit. And when that happens, not only is there prophecy, but there is tongues and there is signs, wonders and miracles. And I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to cover you with this glorious presence. I love you guys. Wow, I'm so whacked right now. <laughs> I'm so, you shut up, Baba.